welcome to another brand new episode of the qualified i'm jedi johnson 22 joined as always by the great dom tober the always steady sticks boy 73 bad to the bone Brucifer, and the architect joe's doolin what's going on fellas dom i'm happy to see that your wall of boba survived the earthquake yes listen all i know is it was a crazy time you know hey, look well, having an earthquake in New York City is actually nuts to begin with. You know, with all these uh, things rattling. Because earthquakes are weird. They are weird. And <laughs> I uh, never experienced one, which even though it's funny, I actually slept through one that happened and I didn't even feel it. But this is the first time I ever felt an earthquake, which. Was that I sex? Surfed it. What? Was that Not sex you slept through? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, that was a long time ago. It probably was me making the, uh, the waves, you know, the earthquake, you know? <laughs> nah, it was good. That's why you should always good. sleep in a waterbed. It was crazy, you know. I checked on my neighbors and stuff like that. They're all good, so I kind of. Uh, <laughs> After he checked on his Boba Fett, he checked. I actually, was <laughs> I got a couple of people reaching out to me saying, "Dom, you're okay." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine, man." I go, "But thank you. I appreciate you reaching out to me. It was, it was a kind gesture that people actually is, are worried about me, which I'm kind of. Uh, yeah. I'm very flattered and very uh, you know, humbled about that. Thank you. A lot of people are worried about you now that we're just adding earthquakes to the to the list of things we're worried about. <laughs> you know? Hey, don't worry about it. The best is yet to come. Don't worry about it. Oh. Anybody else have any harrowing uh, earthquake? Uh, anybody else feel it? I got no yeah. rumbles down here today. Nothing, nothing. But nothing. I felt, felt it in Syracuse. Yeah, that's what they said. For a little bit. I yeah. didn't see it, feel anything. I know they felt it a lot in Jersey. Uh, Pete reached out to me. Well, if that was center, I would think they would feel it there. Yeah. Yeah. Probably all those dump trucks dumping off the garbage in the Hudson. Oh, that, that's that smell. Oh. All, all the bo- all the bodies they're rolling out into the. You know what's funny? Uh, the is, that, <laughs> is that you know sometimes when you have wind gusts in you know, certain areas, buildings do shake yeah. because it's the way the buildings are made. And sometimes you have heavy wind gusts; they do get into like the structure of the building and shake it a little bit. I thought that was that, and didn't realize it until I started seeing the wall, my wall, and my showcases started shaking. I'm like, oh, this is. Mm-hmm. My wife kept going, it's an earthquake. It's an earthquake. I'm like, ah. It was an it's alien weird. flying by, affecting the earth. Yeah. But well, you, you, you tend to think, oh, earthquake, it's going to be like a vibration. But it's not. It's a weird kind of shaking and yeah. tilting. It's it's very weird. Well, that's why buildings are always built like that. Tall buildings yeah. are meant to. Uh, yeah, they have, they have they have a little thing. That they're meant to sway. Because if not, they'll just crack. It. It's a mess. So, if you go, uh, if you go into some of Skyscrapers, you'll you'll get that real yeah. tall ones because they they they're you know you go up to the fiftieth sixtieth floor you can feel swaying it's very weird. Yep. So nothing to do with earthquakes, but uh, in fact, now that I'm seeing this, it's not even a new article. This is back from last year, but uh, a study in California finds that uh, there's no such thing as beer goggles. Don, do you agree with that? Uh, I think it's a lie. Don't believe it. <laughs> a study a study has found despite popular belief people may not get beer goggles after having a few drinks researchers in california have found that consuming a few alcoholic drinks does not make one see others more attractive those nerds, well, listen, those nerds aren't getting laid they don't know there are talking different about. ways <laughs> of getting intoxicated you just gotta think that uh-oh here we you go. know so Alcohol lowers inhibitions. It lowers exactly. Inhibitions. exactly. I, 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 I kind of agree with this. Process, that's, uh... Yeah, I, I agree with this. In fact, I'm going to say that if you find somebody attractive with your gear, beer goggles on, you probably found them attractive with them off. It's just alcohol has lowered your inhibitions to where now you want to. Well, I'll tell you what. Just an excuse. Listen, if you're there looking you for a 10, my advice, five two fives, and there's your 10. Uh Words, words to live by. Don, 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 okay, Joe, let's get on with it. What do you want? You want to say hello to the chat now? Yeah, let's uh, let's say hello <laughs> oh, to the chat. Now that. Oh boy. All right. Let's see. GT coming in first and second. What's going on, GT Comic? Glad <laughs> that you were at least uh, stopped by and gave us a thumbs up and a hey there. Tommy Longbox, Friday Night Fun. Have a good one, fellows. Have a good one to you. Happy weekend. Good weekend, Tommy. Hopefully you catch us on the Rewind if you're not still with us. Please do. Taladia Plays. Hey, man. Taladia. Welcome, buddy. Hey, man. Getting some of Bruce's crew around here. 
Yeah. Terry well, Floyd. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. <laughs> a lot of hey, you. Y'all, y'all come back now here. Terry Floyd. Yeah. Lewis earthquake, but no cigar. Try again next time. Aim just a bigger bit, bit farther to the south. <laughs> Would that be DC? I don't know. Yeah, that'd be me. That that'd be me down here. <laughs> oh boy. What's going on, Kyle? What's up, fellas? And Bruce. Bruce what? 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 <laughs> and God. Hey, Mama yeah. Bear. Mama Bear, hey, how Mama are you? Bear. Hey, Mama, Mama Bear. Bear. And yeah, uh, two da, two or two or five twos for Dom. Well, listen, that's all two. you know is one Dom is good enough. Two Doms, that's total uh, chaos. Uh, one Dom and, is uh, way too much. Yeah, you uh, don't need that. Or, or ten ones, either way. <laughs> <laughs> all have, right, that's uh, it. You have a short, quite a short variety. list of uh, hey there's today. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, we have an interesting show tonight. We're uh, going to do our outside looking in. We are going to take a look at some news, some comics, take a look at some Justice League Dark, play some fun games, look at an interesting not comic sale of the yeah. week. Jedi We're going to beta support. test a new game at the very end of the show. Hopefully it doesn't go to shit on us. It's in the bottle, I'm not playing then. Uh, we, we, we enjoy, uh, we enjoy beta enough. testing games. You'll play I, more I, like it. I enjoy beta testing. You just want me to play. It shakes my head. Uh, yeah, very briefly, today's pinup is Ed DeCona, uh in honor of the start of baseball season. Yep. So there you go. just had like to throw, a, had to throw a baseball pin up up there yeah. today. He missed. Uh, probably, I, he I'm getting really back, back into my into my old man ways of sitting around and listening to baseball games on transistor radio. So hey, listen, definitely this is not a picture from uh, it's a league of their own, I can tell you that. No, definitely not. No. <laughs> That's not Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> no, it's not. All righty. So let us do. Welcome to the outside looking in. These are the books that were not good enough for the CBSI Hot 10. Short, just a little short. What? First up, we got Usagi Yojimbo, The Crow, one in one forty. There was one sale about eighty eight dollars, and there's one on eBay going for about one ten. Let's see if interest is peaked with this because there doesn't seem to be a lot out there currently. Mm-hmm. Just the one listed, but you never it's know an, how the market will go with these um, Usagi books. It's an interesting ratio. A one in forty is an interesting ratio. It's a nice I, cover too. It is. I, I like when Usagi just does an A and B cover and a, a one in ten. But um, uh, uh, these Yojimbo covers, there's like one every four months, which is really, really, really good. And some of some of them catch a little fire, some of them don't. Um, so we'll kind of see where this one goes. It's. I would love it, to see a greater version. He's of this already one. rushing us. Uh, I would. Love yeah. to see- <laughs> A uh, 9.8 on this would probably be difficult yeah. because of the black. They need to talk about be, their... It won't be difficult. because most man these, soap operas. Most of these are probably on quad stock, so it won't be that difficult. Why is it called The Crow? Is that I don't know. I have, not, I have not picked up this series yet. I, I mean, there's always some kind of subtitle in it, but... Uh, is that the artist? I haven't I haven't dug into mm-hmm. this one yet. No, no it's I, just the name of the series. Wow, it's been 40 years already? Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not a while. Yeah, yeah if you read Greek comics, you know that. But uh, Beto in the uh, 80s. You always throwing a jab in there. You know what, Bruce? Yeah. Listen, don't <laughs> I got some good stuff for you later on, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're a summon a bitch. <laughs> wow, you, yeah. you haven't said that in a long time. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> We're going to have to clip back. that out now, you son of a He's bitch. coming back. <laughs> uh, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll see We'll see where this one goes. You, know, you, you never know. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Next up, we got the Sensational She-Hulk number seven, the one in twenty-five. Recent sales are twenty to thirty dollars, but copies are listed between thirty and thirty-five. Why between thirty-five and fifty? Like, it's not. It's not his best work. Why I, is the nose white? I don't like. I don't like. That's just the lighting. I don't like the. Uh, no. I don't like the face on this Nakayama. 
I don't, I don't mind it. Uh, I mean, again, it's another one of those where it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Cause I mean, out of the gate at ratio is fine. And, but having some out there listed above ratio, either they're just going to sit out there or if they start to move that will, you know, yeah, and it was one that sold for like forty five dollars pre sale. Yeah, pre sales, pre sales. There's always there's always one person out there. It's like I gotta get this. This is gonna be hot. I need it now. Man, it comes out of the gate at ratio. I do like the uh, the, the the header, like the uh, She Hulk all broken up. She's tearing. Yeah, the trade dress oh, smashed trade up. I like that. Nice. Yeah. Like I'm that. I'm I'm with Bruce for I like everything except for the face. I don't like mm-hmm. the faces. Uh, the face. I'm trying to figure out about the face. Doesn't like look like She Hulk. Like, yeah, that's very really think about it. If she was at a con, she'll be a comic nerd nine. Yeah, that's. <laughs> hey, there you go, Dom. That's what that's your. That's, uh, that's, that's like, like a Midwest forward. seven. Oh, <laughs> and a Southern five. <laughs> there you go. Number two five. Yeah, it's either you? a Southern five or a cow. So just yeah. say it. <laughs> Hey. Well, the beer goggles come through. We don't you know, get oh, that. You might be a couple of no such thing, Dom. We we couple. established that it's science. There's no such thing. <laughs> <The> science. <laughs> it'll, be right. it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where this this goes and Dom see if it, science. it catches. But I don't know. It's it it doesn't have that much of a grab to me that justifies it staying above ratio. I mean, they, they put out ratios all the time, and it's you know when you see one, you know it's like oh that looks special. This is nice, but it's yeah. unless it's just scarcity because I don't yeah. know how many stores are ordering this many copies of Sensational She Hulk at you know issue seven on a quickly rebooted another volume. So yeah, we'll see. Next up, we have Deadpool one, the one in one hundred around ten sales for one hundred to one hundred twenty. That's about. Ratio to just above ratio, I would thought there would have been some more, some more, some more interest in this book since it's a new Deadpool and it's a high ratio, and I don't believe there's a trade dress for this one. Which yeah, there, there, there is. There's a trade dress for this one. Yeah, there is a trade dress. For this one. Never mind. Do not pick this up. If you like this cover? Pick up the trade dress. My man is packing. Man, he got I, a big gun. I mean, I think. I mean, ten sales for a one one hundred is decent. But they're at ratio, so yeah. it's kind of like, uh, you know, maybe you start to see a little more scarcity. Yeah, we'll but see. I, we'll I, I don't. I, I think with the when you have a trade dress of the same cover, it just it's like why? I was like, you know, why? You know, are you really holding on to it because you think it's really going to increase that much in value at this it's, point? It's a really good cover, actually. It is a great cover. Mm-hmm. I like to get an autograph. Really, you guys yeah. like this cover? Absolutely. Yes, for a Deadpool cover, yeah. Yeah, mm. and when the sword on the front of the gun is freaking awesome. If uh, mm. if it didn't have a, a regular trade dress and they just had the one in one hundred, I think this would be doing better price wise. Mm. But um, and we'll see if this goes up next week, if it gains momentum or it just falls flat. Yeah. But I yeah, think they. If it goes up, you might see it on the hot 10. If not, if not, you know, you'll never see it again. <laughs> yeah, it's not life bell drawing it, so who knows? No, no there's, there's feet there. Well, you know what? It's actually, it's a pretty cool. I like the way he's drawing, too. He's not like, yeah, he's actually the feet look good, you know. It, <laughs> it, Everything's it, proportional. Exactly. It looks, it looks very sharp on the white, and the fact that they did that little bit of shadow Portable underneath it. I like that on the white cover. I, I like that. It, it if it was just a straight white cover and you didn't have that depth of the shadow on there, um, I don't think it would be as cool. But uh, I like no, the gun. It pop the gun part's and, cool. And there's room enough on the top left for a remark if you want one, or, yeah, or right it. in between the legs. Nice too. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't want to go there, but I knew somebody would. Well, there's yeah. room there. That's it's, it's perfect there's spot. A lot of place room there. Remark. You can get a signature up top, remark on the bottom. Get one of those Deadpool balloons. Yeah, you get one of those Deadpool balloons. You could put the dead, forty bucks. You could put the, you could put the uh, the Deadpool cock there. <laughs> oh God, low hanging <laughs> fruit. Dom grabs. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Next up, we got Uncanny X Men one ninety eight about twenty sales this week. Aurora's reaching ten to fifteen dollars. 
a CG C9.8 are around $100. Damn, X Men show is bringing all these books and storylines to the forefront. Those damn booty shorts. Yep. <laughs> you didn't have a pair of those. Stop. Yes, I did back in the 80s. We know you did with thigh high socks. Uh, yep, that's what I did. Yeah, they, 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 they started they started part yeah. one. They're gonna finish they're gonna finish it through. You know, it's it's only a two part series for this comic of Storm fighting the spirit animals to uh to get her powers back. And They've been flying through things in X-Men 97, the way yeah. they've been going through stories. So um, I could see this one getting wrapped up pretty fast. And uh, and this book going back to the, you know, three to five dollar book it was before. But right now, if you have it, it might be a nice time to uh, unload, unload it. Yes, I did. Absolute gig. Uh, if you play along with SNS's games, that comment will be. A question on their show in a few weeks. What did Dom say? Was that Dom that said <laughs> that bull cock? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the dead boot rooster. The cock. Uh, yeah. Come on. Why? All right. Last up on the list. Oh, I can say Deadpool donkey. Yes. You know I'm saying Deadpool ass. Yeah, donkey. Uh, that's offensive to Irish people. Fantastic Ford life story number one. <laughs> About 20 sales already this week. After only a couple of days, but only been between five and ten dollars, with news of Silver Surfer being cast and this story taking place in the '60s, and rumors that the movie will take place in the '60s, this will be a story to read to maybe tie into the movie. But it's Marvel, so they won't use the story. <laughs> well, I heard that she's pregnant in space. So she's going to give birth in space. It's Franklin. Is it, uh, is it Reed Child? Uh, or Shallow Balls? I don't know what the hell it is, man. All I know is that uh, Name Victoria, Victoria, like Victoria Von Doom is going to be the bad one now. Victoria Von Doom. Did you tell women. this joke already? Oh, women already. I think you told this joke already. I don't know, man. Somebody told this joke. I said something. I sent it. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing we're going to start getting more and more little Fantastic Four leaks here and there. Yep. Um so uh, people can start digging through dollar boxes for Fantastic Four books because uh, there's plenty of them. That's, in where, there. that's where a majority yeah. of them are. <laughs> plenty of them in there. Is in dollar boxes. So you know we got this going. So this is uh, do, yeah. all right, so what's his name is uh, the rest of this, right? Uh, what's his name? We did the uh, Spider Man. Right, doing <laughs> Spider Man. He's still doing it. What? Watts. John Watts is doing uh, directing it. What? Is he uh, the Fantastic Watts Four? What you talking about? Yeah, yeah John Watts. Yes. He's yeah, not okay. directing Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, he's doing that. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see, about we'll see what they do. Or Daredevil? Did you see the set photos of uh, Born Again? I'm fucking excited on that. I'm sorry. I have to What's that have to do with this show? Punisher. I'm just sorry. I'm just saying. It just it brought back Disney. Uh, has some good stuff coming out, and then they throw oh, a curveball. Give it a give it a week. We'll have a dumb rant. They hit you. <laughs> Listen, they they throw that curveball. And they make you happy. Then they hit you in the middle of your uh, right, right between your legs, with that little baseball bat, with the bullshit that they put out too. So Dude, end the story. Yeah. We're not going to kink shame you, and shame you on what you like, but if you're interested in more of what he has to say about these books, please check check out cbsi.com for the outside looking in and the CBSI Hot Ten. Thank you. God damn you, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Moving on. Thank for you our, for our now and later. It was a, it was a rough week this week. Looking looking for stuff. I, I was I was not overwhelmed with what came out this week, so I had to hmm. had to dig deep. Um, That's what Tom said. <laughs> first up, uh, uh, Comic Tom's book there, the uh, Crash Down. It's a nice. I I, I haven't seen a others. Mayhew that I really really loved for a while. Um, hmm. I really like this cover. Um, it, it is it is quite sharp. Uh, so if you're a Mayhew fan, looking looking that guy up there. Uh, every once in a while, he'll uh, like I said, Mike Mike was getting very very Mike Mayhew was getting very caught up in the homages for a long time. So I'm glad he's kind of at least as far as I can tell, breaking away and doing some 
more yeah. original stuff. And he's a great artist. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great artist. So, you know, when you, when you get a cover like this, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty sweet. So, uh, if you're a Mayhew fan or a up, Jeff Rock 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 fan or a Comic Tom fan, uh, you know, uh, it's not a bad book to, uh, to pick up. Uh, next on my list, uh, as always, there's some new Archie and Friends book. And this week it is Hot Rod Racing number one. There's a Happy Comics Dan DiCarlo vintage Veronica variant that comes in regular or metal. Uh, I collect Veronica covers. I like extremely simple Archie covers, like pop art covers. I like you know, just very simple Archie covers. So I am definitely picking this one up, and I, I always enjoy the the limited runs on these these uh, variants as well can't get much more simple than this one <laughs> yeah no but, but i love it I, all that wasted space back there i love it i but i for archie stuff it just it just works for me um i like it i know you do mama bear uh, listen uh john watts isn't directing fantastic four that's that man that's happening so what? So what, what happened with John Watts? What is he? He's, he's going back to Spider Man. I'm not even. Man, sure. Marvel switches everything every other week with all these people who's they writing. They gave him a Star Wars movie. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I heard because uh, the fact is that I know Sony wanted uh, wanted Watts to do number Spider Man four, but then that he was the four. I don't know. What? I don't know. Can we get back to the comics? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Last on the things that came out this week, I'm a sucker for a Joel Jones cover. Minor Threats, The Fastest Way Down, number one. As a cover C, it's a nice VHS style uh, Joel Jones cover. So, nice. It's a good hmm. one. It's an interesting little series as well. Patton Oswald writes it. So, there's a bit of comedy in there if you That's find him funny. One, huh? And uh, for the future, I didn't like anything that was out there in previews because <laughs> gone through previews up through July for all of these. Uh, and I was running out of interesting things to show. So I do what I always do. I went the Kickstarter route. So uh, all of these have a few days left uh, for funding for Kickstarter. Uh, so first on the list is Bad Rep Cover D by uh, Eliza Pochita. It's the Wedding Elizabeth. Crashers homage. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just a great cover. Um, no, no, it's a good cover. Yeah, yeah it's 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 a, it's a good cover. Uh, <laughs> Who's that that, 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 no, that's a good cover. Next on the list, uh, Tales of Asunda Volume 2, uh, the Niobe She Tribe. It's a Jay Lee variant. It's like just a very nice Jay Lee cover. Uh, every now and then, Jay Lee. We'll do a Kickstarter cover, and they always tend to be very, very pretty. This is no exception. No exception to the rule. Uh, last on the list, uh, Cloth of Spider Island. Uh, this is actually, when you get this, it's three books. This is issue, wow. this is the cover for issue two. It's a three-issue connecting oh, wow. cover. Uh, so, so this there's is a Kickstarter, a, too? Yes, there's a really? set of this with um, some oh. hot bikini girls with some big old monsters in the background. Uh, that's a three cover connecting cover. And then there's another set of three connecting covers as well that you can get that are all just the monsters in a connecting set. And they also have a three set in the Kickstarter that is a uh, 3D book as well. So, this is the best one you picked this week, Joe. This is uh, the whole time you're talking about the other okay. two. I kept looking at this one. This one's really good. Who's the artist? I know. You know, I, I I'm not sure. Uh, um, I, I know that I know the guy who did it. I did the book, but it wasn't clear who whether he was the artist on these. Sometimes they're kickstarters because they're writing up the stuff themselves. Sometimes it's just like eh, I like it. Uh, so. Yeah. It's yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. it's an interesting it's an interesting Kickstarter if you're into you know kind of Lovecraftian yeah, yeah, yeah. monsters. Mm -hmm. 
it's uh, it's a it's a cool looking series. Uh, and if you're into you know 40s pinups and stuff like that, there's some good covers there as well. So kind of scratches uh, multiple itches for people. So. Hopefully preview starts to update some stuff uh, a little, no, a little bit it, off into the now, future for now. Cause things are, things are starting to get a little thin. If guess, uh, trivia, I'm so, sure yeah. so I went, I went on to the, the Kickstarter. They have two different sets that are um, connecting. There's this set yeah. and then there's another set. And I think there's a, no, there's like there's three, three there's three actually. connecting sets. The first set is the the girls with the monsters behind. The second connecting set is all the monsters, and the Monster third connecting high. set is a three D connecting set. Nice. I might get all three sets. <laughs> it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty cool looking book. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of really good stuff on Kickstarter. Um, I know I have I have my rabbit holes I fall into, as you as you can see. <laughs> That's what you call it, rabbit holes. Um, well, glory you, can hole. fi- you can find some really interesting stuff. I haven't seen Joe all- for days. He's yeah, <laughs> it's in his rabbit hole yes. with sticks. It's just a hole. You can you can find some really really it's cool artists. Dark in here. Um, <laughs> and again, turn on the light. Turn on the light. You- you can find artists that you like that are currently doing. I mean, Hughes will do Kickstarters, Lobos will do Kickstarters. So you'll you'll find covers in there of artists that are bigger artists or more well known artists that will sometimes drop a cover, mm-hmm. and they do tend to be pretty limited in terms of uh, yeah. of what they're printing for this stuff. So yeah, because so, they control the printing themselves. So the set you're the one you're showing is the twenty pounds or twenty six dollars American. Uh, for the set, the other there's one set that's um, also twenty pounds, and then the, the other one is twenty five pounds or thirty two dollars. Yeah, so I mean, it's for a Kickstarter, it's actually pretty reasonable. I mean, a lot of the Kickstarters can get a little pricey. Um, mm-hmm. For this to get a set of three books for you know twenty five American is not bad at all. So what's he saying, no. Christopher? What? <laughs> it takes a lot to break me. I was gonna say, what, what could have, what could have uh, possibly Mama Bear possibly done? Well, it could have been the comment about poking the bear, and she said, "At least a first date first. Ah, that's that one. Well played. Um, I did throw in uh, just a couple pulps this week, uh, since we're now starting to see pulps getting graded. We're starting to see sales for pulps getting graded. That are, uh, mm. So the price changes are um, are interesting at best because grading pulps is, you know, the way people would grade raw pulps is is really weird because um, I think there's very few people that really know how to grade raw pulps. And unlike comics, you know, almost all of these are square bound. The the, pa- the paper, um, you know, if you if you hold it the wrong way, turns into complete pieces of confetti. Uh, you know, they're not always evenly. It's not an even cut on a lot of pages sometimes. So, um, you know, the, these are pretty pretty beat up, and they're also very old and fragile. So, it's nice to see them getting graded, so we can kind of start looking at things in slabs and saying, oh, okay, this is what is truly considered a four or five. So. Uh, this is Weird Tales 108. Uh, this is one of the most sought after pulps that is out there. This is your first appearance in anything of Conan the Sumerian. So you are getting your first Conan in this book by Robert E. Howard, the creator of Conan. Uh, so this is number one, an amazing, cool cover. But in the guts of this, you also do have the first Conan story ever. So if you're a Conan fan, it's uh, it's a great thing to have. Sold for seventy eight hundred bucks. So uh, these things are starting to get a bit pricey. And next on the list, one of the most recognizable uh, weird tales: uh, the Brundage Batwoman cover. A 7 sold for a crisp $30,000. So, yeah, nice. yeah, this is 
number one, it's a Brundage and, and Margaret Brundage's work always goes for a premium, but this is by far one of her, if not the most recognizable cover that she did. It's also one of the most recognizable pulp covers those, as well. So those boobs of hers are really uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, this thing, this thing always goes for a grip. Uh, so it's really interesting to see them start to, that's why it sold for 30,000 Dom because of the boobs. I know. <laughs> yeah. But it, it is, it is fun. $30,000 pair of hooters. Right yeah. there. <laughs> it's fun to start seeing these sold graded to see, you know, how much that bumps them from the raws. So, you know what? That's actually cheaper than a pair of uh, boobs. If someone buy, you know what I'm saying? $30,000, you know, what? No, what? Doesn't cost that much, Dom. <laughs> yeah, kind like, of boobs. You need to, these you need boobs? to price check your uh, your cosmetic surgery there, Dom. It's nowhere close to thirty grand for a pair. No, of I'm saying it's, it's cheaper it's than a pair of boobs. You can get a pair of boobs in DR for like five hundred dollars. You could also get an ass full of freaking concrete in uh, freaking Colombia, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and the slab the slabs are very nice Man. as well. I mean, because pulps are a little bit smaller than a comic. Um, but a little bit thicker than a comic. Um, the size of the slab isn't too far off <laughs> from a comic slab. Like, I don't know if you've ever gotten a magazine slabbed or own any magazine. They're unwieldy. They're so damn huge. <laughs> and it's just large thing of plastic. That's freaking huge. They're, they're a pain to collect if you uh, like graded magazines, but uh, the pulps far more manageable, far more manageable. So we got in our pulps. Let's get to some news. Uh, we got a first look at The Bride, Maggie Gyllenhaal's movie, where we will get Christian Bale as Frankenstein's monster. It is set to release October 2nd in theaters. Uh, anybody excited about uh, seeing some monsters in theaters? Or is this going to be too artsy because it's being done by Maggie Gyllenhaal? I'm looking forward to it. It's I give it a shot. You know, it's if you're tired of comic book comic book movies, this is something different that you can probably sink your teeth in because I know it's going to be well written and well well direct directed. You know, and Christian Bale, he'll sulk in a corner, brooding or something like he always does. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I definitely. I'll definitely you do this probably. Yeah. Uh, probably on opening weekend. I, this picture kind of throws me. I assume Christian is just wanting people to see the scars, like you know, or is yeah. he doing his uh his best Danny from Greece, where he's like, I don't know what's going on. Oh, in this picture. Tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll check this out. And like somebody said yesterday on my show, they're going to compare this to the, um the Joker from with the tattoos. Oh. Yeah. I didn't see the tattoo. Yeah, I, but I mean, it's supposed to be set back in time, so I, I was a little thrown off by the tattoo. But uh, are you just pulling cop I don't know. I'm just happy. I'm I'm happy for monster movies. I want to see Where's old school from? monster movies make a comeback. Um, what Dom? Dom what? Stop watching. Dom, stop watching wrestling again. No, I shut my oh, yeah. TV. It's watching I wrestling. I shut my TV off. Wrestling. <laughs> After we heard like five minutes of commentary. Well, five minutes of commentary. I was watching SmackDown because we are doing a wrestling show afterwards. Come on, man. Yeah, after the show. After we're doing the show. <laughs> think about the show you're on. I, I'm on. I'm thinking about the show I'm on. You're talking about other things. I'm trying to, you know. All right, what? just go. Go. Uh, Robbie. Robbie Liefeld. What uh, about him? Seems, Tom, is this seems for SNS? Some, somehow. He'd be kicked off the show already. I'm just saying. you would be gone. He's, he's, he somehow Not seems really. to have hit the option <laughs> bank. Not cooking fajitas, so because that's all we seem to hear now is Rob Liefeld having this option or this project about Rob or this project about Rob or some of his things. Um, but um, Evangeline uh, has uh, some bigger names attached to it. So Simon Kinsberg, uh, Margot Robbie set to produce, Olivia Wilde, who I dislike. Uh, well, apparently this was um option in 2013. It had um, Gina Carano attached to play Angeline back then, and then the deal fell apart because of light bill, like everything else. So hopefully it gets made. If this gets made before 
Spawn, that would be embarrassing. That would be very embarrassing to McFarlane. I was about to say that. The Spawn does. It it would be. Angeline. I have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you've heard this spot. This is option, possibly the pro, uh, profit, some of his other stuff. So it's a 90s comic book. Which yeah. That, the People main are... character is a demon slash vampire. Is it a, hunter. Was it one of his image comic? It's one of his image. No, it's an angel. Angel no. falls. It's no. fallen to heaven. And it was um, Maximum Comics or something like that back then. Yeah. Was, uh, was it Image Extreme or? Uh, no, I think it was Maximum Comics. So yeah, so Robbie, uh, Robbie is uh, making some bank now. Uh, whether it ever gets made or not, eh, who knows? Uh, if he shows up first day high as a kite, he's done. He doesn't have to show up for anything. He'll get an executive producer tag uh, out of it, and they'll be like, "Okay, we'll call on you if we need you." Uh, but you know. where's Rob? Yeah. He's on whatnot. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Kicking everybody off the stream. Yeah. So, uh, Shannon's so, agonizing. Like, don't do it. So, uh, I guess, I, I guess didn't. now, now, now we know why he said he wasn't going to be I, doing any, any more Deadpool or anymore it. and everything else because he has other stuff to do now. Like, plan his retirement that he's not going to do. Um, get more DC Elseworlds. Uh, yeah. the new. The new, uh, if you're into fantasy and DC Elseworlds, uh, Deathstroke will lead the Dark Knights of Steel story uh, with All Winter with a pretty badass Matina cover. So. That cover's great. Yeah. And, and Dark Knights of Steel was an amazing story. It took forever to finish, but it was an amazing story. Yeah, DC, DC seems to do Elseworld stories pretty well. They, they can... They can put something in there and run run with the story for a while, mm -hmm. make it very popular, and then just yeah, okay, it's done now, and then just move on with other stuff, which is nice. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. big thumbs up to DC because they can seem you, to do a more. Let me ask you a question: Do you think DC's um, Elseworlds are better, much better than What Ifs? Better than what? Better, what better than Marvel's What Ifs? Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> because Marvel's What Ifs <laughs> literally focuses on one character for five issues. Okay. ridiculous i don't care what what if gwen or what if alien or what if venom or what if miles stop just do a series and do different stories like you did in the 80s just saying. they also the else worlds they, they tend to do a good job of building out a universe that's pretty well fleshed out for what ends up just kind of being a one-off kind of else world story so yeah. um it'll be it'll be pretty cool oh I'll check for you, Richville. If Knights of Steel is in, uh, we're gonna get the uh, original Transformers cartoon on the big screen. Yes, so the first uh, four episodes of the original series. Yep, May fifteenth, eighteenth, yep. and nineteenth. That's so, nice. So uh, if you uh, miss seeing all that, uh, you can you can hear it really loud uh, in the theater and on a big screen. Which will actually be kind of fun. I mean, it's it's kind of fun to get the opportunity to see something like this on a big screen. We're actually talking about the movie too, the uh, Transformers the movie. Yeah, they're going to release it when it comes when uh, the anniversary of that movie drops. But, yeah, because they got what, is that Cybertron or is that Unicron on the on the top. No, that's Cybertron. This is the original. This is the first, this is the okay. beginning. This is the first yeah. time. Yeah, it's the, the first uh, when they first got to Earth. So, yeah. So, uh, nice and still is in paper is in trade paperback and hardcover. Mm -hmm. okay. So you know what's funny Watch this on a big screen and see all the mistakes they made, all the color mistakes. You know, we used to see like the star screams and day, like three star screams because the other color break, or yeah, just oh. the, uh, the guys look the same color. One guy yeah, was the other guy. <laughs> they didn't say whether they were cleaning anything up for it or not, or whether they're yeah. just gonna throw it's it really out there. On the big screen, man. You know, I haven't seen this on the big screen. Actually, I've never seen it on the big screen. Think about it. Growing up, just watching it on TV. Yeah, just I'll, I'll come down. TV. We can watch it together. Right, I'll bring my it, Transformers bucket. Let's go. We'll talk. We'll, we'll do this. We can talk. And, and the TVs we we were watching them on weren't high def. <laughs> let me tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> it was that big no. TV tube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still can't believe that, forty years. That. Transformers. Yeah, everything is uh, reaching a forty and fifty year plateau. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Forty. Years. That's just that's just nuts. But 
Mm -hmm. It's great to have a franchise, a uh, an IP that that uh, lasts that long and still selling, even though the Transformers are made. Well, actually, they made better now because they actually look like the counterpart than they did when they were made in the eighties. You think so? I like the eighties stuff because the eighties stuff was metal. Everything's plastic now. Ooh. Yeah, the the eighty the eighty yeah. stuff hurt if you throw it at if you throw yeah. it at somebody. Now everything just breaks. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but now it's 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 a great IP. It's it's one of the better IPs that has lasted all these years. Um, you know, it's it's never really gone through times where people <laughs> were like, "This is absolute dog shit." I mean, people had complaints people about some of the movies Dom, here and there. Why, but... This is why Dom behaves the way he does. I agree. <laughs> Hey, listen, no. you, get, you should be blessed and honored to have me in your presence. And How about we do a Dom show where Dom does everything? I'm a one-man show, baby. Well, one just show. Dom. I am the whole damn show. <laughs> just Dom. It'll be a just blank screen with him yelling at his camera. Dom's, Dom's the Dom's talent. Dom's mouth doesn't even match Dom's his, the the, talent. his voice coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dynamite announced that their initial order of Space Ghost 1, uh, which was 33,500 copies, might be a bit underordered. Uh, granted, that sounds like some salesman talk to get people to buy more copies. That's uh, mm -hmm. but as a slight reminder for people that might just see the first part of that and be like, underordered, I better run out and grab 10 copies. Please remember that Space Ghost One is fully returnable for stores ordering twenty or more copies. So um, if they That's get crazy. saddled with a bunch of those copies, That's they ridiculous. can return. <laughs> so I remember, uh, I remember. all I have to do is say is screw CGC for not giving my Space Ghost Ashcan a nine point eight and rejecting it, bastards. What the Ashcan one yet? The Ashcan. Yeah, I have the Ashcan. They rejected my um, Ashcan and CGC. You bastards. Why? Whatever. I'll, I'll take your know. rejection. I'll take your rejection. They didn't give it a nine eight. They rejected it. Nine eight. Did yeah, you figure fuck it before you? Uh, exactly. I didn't even touch the book. <laughs> I, I, literally, I literally got the book, <laughs> put it in a bat in an envelope to go to CGC to be graded. Yeah. I don't. This, this series. This series looks good. I I like a lot. Of, I'm happy. There's a lot of series Space coming Ghost. out that are coming back that uh, look like a lot of fun. Uh, the Space Ghost, Ghost. You know, it's not it's not the cartoon. It's not the Adult Swim version of Space Ghost. It's supposed to be God. more Space Ghost Coast to Coast. That's the best. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. It is great. Stop. No. Space Ghost Coast to Coast was amazing. It was amazing. With Zorak. Um, oh, yeah. Man, Come on. Zora, I, Moltar. Oh, no. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and you had Brack. You, you, got, you got Brack. Where's Brack my Thundar, crazy. the Barbarian freaking um, comic book? But yeah, I mean, between this, you, get, you can have a Flash well, Gordon series coming out, we'll Dick Tracy series eventually. coming Hope out. So, so. so. A, lot of, a, lot of good, a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, you know what's crazy? I'm, it's crazy now all these books are coming out. You have a lot of uh, properties from the 70s that are actually coming out. You know, you have uh, mm -hmm. G-Force. You know, they got the Battle of the Planets. Uh, you know, you got Space Ghost. You got the yep. Thunder. I think Thunder's the only one that's not really out yet. Well, mm -hmm. they, didn't the, they didn't do the – well, they, DC did all of them, all the team-ups and – it's got the mm. Herculoids. You got yeah, the... Um, yeah. What else? Um, DC shit the bed on that. Yeah. Because... I, I, want, I want more Johnny Quest. Johnny Space Quest. Rangers. I thought there was a Johnny Quest coming. You but, want, uh, you but yeah, Hodge. I mean, the DC not still having these properties to be able to put out. Kind of sucks you didn't like a bit, the You didn't like the Scooby-Doo Apocalypse? I, I talk, talk to that guy up there. He's the Scooby-Doo fan. Um, uh, and, and they were bad. I like, I, I have all the DC stuff. <laughs> yeah, they were, I, I liked it. The, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I just, I, I wish they, DC was still putting out. I love, I love the fact with dynamite. I know I'll get a ton of covers, so I'll get a lot mm. of art that I like and stuff like that. And I'll be a sucker and buy a bunch of shit. That's never going to be worth anything, but I'll enjoy it when I buy it nonetheless. <laughs> right. Um, whereas with DC, you know, they're a little more controlled about what they're putting out and how they put it out. So uh, maybe get a little more value out of what you buy in there. But uh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm happy. I love I love Space Ghost. So. Come on, they have to come yeah. out with Jabba Juice. Oh, did you just say Johnny Quest was dog shit? What? You said Jabba Johnny Joke? Quest was dog shit. No, Johnny Quest was fantastic. Johnny? What are you talking about? Haji's the man. You got to freaking have his own comic book. Freaking Bandit saved them so many times. 
Bandit was the real <laughs> star. We should have a Venture no. Brothers comic. Give us a Venture Brothers comic. I'll take that. Venture Brothers would be cool. I like Venture Brothers. Yeah, it's a good comic. You had our our prior vice president, Race Bannon, uh, in there, and it was just great. <laughs> oh, Race. <laughs> Uh, Futurama for all you Futurama fans, the 12th season will arrive on Hulu July 29th. So. I gotta watch good news, other. everybody. I think I didn't watch the last four. Uh, I'm I know I'm behind, um, so I'm not sure if the quality is still where it's at. Uh, not bad, but uh, become uh, there is there is definitely a point. Well, I would say around when Simpsons started to have their kind of fall off. Which I would say probably would be around season fifteen and eighteen around there. Uh, Futurama definitely pick up the slack. Um, mm -hmm. Great show. So yep. I'm glad I'm glad they're still cranking them out out there because uh, it's definitely a fantastic show. Yeah, the 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 Hulu seasons are they're they're not to the quality of the original run, but they are still good and worth watching. Still good. Uh, that's good. It's good to know because yeah. it's a fantastic show and amazing talents on that show as well. Uh, Albert was removed from his home. Uh, as, how, how close yeah. to Sticks, Bruce? How close are you guys to Hamburg? I'm about two and a half hours away. There you go. Well, uh, some guy had a 12 foot alligator or alligator uh, living in his house, and that 12 foot, 750 pound reptile was removed from this gentleman's house. Um, and now there is an outcry because the reptile was removed. The man cared for this gator who apparently is also like mostly blind and has other health issues. Um, I wonder he's wearing, why. Cause he's, and he's wearing a, a saber's house. jersey, which I find hilarious. Um, <laughs> but uh, why, you know, you see now the right, point is going to die because it was taken away from his owner. What? Well, he's illegal. Probably poor health. He's probably in a poor know. health because illegal. he was living people in a guy's doing, house instead of in his. The, his people are habitat. doing other shit illegal. That's the now, worst shit. Come on. Appar break, apparently, break. they took him from this guy because they said yeah. his permit had expired. This gentleman had oh. said he had repeatedly, repeatedly tried to contact the people about the permitting, and they never returned any of his emails or calls. And then they came. And took his friend. Hey, he made society uh, great. So. He was taking off the homeless people off the street and feeding them the damn thing. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. This guy was actually I... building uh, an addition to his house uh, at a big pool and stuff like that to just specifically for this large gator. I, I don't. I don't understand people that keep reptiles as pets. I just always kind of it's like people I mean, keep spiders as pets. It's just yeah, really it's like me. it's like people but, that it's like people that keep orangutans and things like that as pets. Well, I don't understand. Yeah, you, you're it. just gonna they're, lose your face eventually. They're that's, dangerous. That's, that's all you're asking for. <laughs> they're not domesticated. You yeah. are food to them. I don't care. I saw a video. It was a montage video, whether or not it was the same gator or not. I don't know. I don't give a shit. But it was a it's not, it was such a touching video of this guy saving this little baby croc who lost fuck? his mama. And he raised him and fed him, fed him Vienna sausages and blah, blah, yep. blah, until he became this big freaking gator. And the gator just crawled on the couch and loved on him. No, that gator was sizing you up. That gator was, mm -hmm. no, that gator will eat you. Yeah, so, I don't so understand like, like people this. like this. I don't like the, people that, the people that keep the chimps, like chimps at a certain point when they're domesticated, they, they snap at some point and then they rip your arms off and beat you to death with your own arms. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Chimpanzees yes. are only good for a couple of things. Hey, Chewbacca, uh, one, then. I figured the Chewbacca. Secret agent. <laughs> yes, they, yes, they are great secret agents. We, yeah. we love Lance a lot. And ripping your face off. And ripping yeah, your face off. They did rip that one. That, that one did rip that woman's face off, yeah. which is yeah, disturbing. Ate, ate his yeah. face. She had a, a well, face implant, uh, yeah. implant, and she looked disturbing. Ate the whole face off. What? Crazy. Well, Wonder, if, you, if you didn't see Nope. And that whole ape thing and killing people that, on stage. That was fiction. that was horrible. But that's it was fiction. bad enough being this is real fiction. life. This is real yeah. life. These things Whoa. really happen. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't wasn't there a guy in your building down that had a tiger at one point in New York City there? What? What? I don't know if it was his building, but in New York City there was a guy who 
I think it was yeah, Mike, Ty- Mike Tyson had a, had a tiger. He had a tiger yeah. living in his apartment. Uh, hey, <laughs> go to Dubai. You have all those sheiks over there freaking uh, owning lions and tigers yeah. and bears in their freaking uh, their kingdom. Oh, my. So, I just, I just saw pet. a video today of a guy in Florida standing in, like, Chest high water dancing with a, a crocodile. I'm like, what is he doing? Alligator, alligator, alligator whatever. Anything that's <laughs> that big should not be. Ew. Come on, Johnny know. Knoxville hey. and Jackass was freaking humping Let freaking just, goddamn sharks. Come on. Let the gators and the pythons fight for dominance in Florida and Louisiana. They don't need to be doing it in your living room. <laughs> Let them be out and just. Get out. Well, he looks comfortable. He has. He has a Saber's jersey five, and a pillow. Yeah. Who who was the cleanup alligator poop? Seriously. I don't even know. I truthfully I, I couldn't even tell you what, what does that even look like? like. Yeah. <laughs> Green and slimy. <laughs> Shaped like somebody's uh, arm. Spicy yes. taco, maybe he'll have shit all over diarrhea. <laughs> Bill, I found your arm. <laughs> uh, they took my fun. life made away. Hey, come on, you know, I, and now that he's look, all kidding aside, I'll be honest with you, I've seen very touching videos that they they put animals back into the uh wild and then years later they go back and that animal's there and comes up to them and knows it's them. Animals mm, yeah. are very smart. See, that's the one thing about animals. What people don't take to understand that animals are very smart. And if you take care of an animal, they will know who no, they are. just don't show you the other nine out of ten videos where the animal rips the <laughs> <with> person <laughs> apart. Yeah, where'd the baby where'd the baby go? I just sat it down. I, I, have, I, have, I have bears. I have bears around me. I won't get near them when I see them. I I stay far yeah. away. Yeah. You like Golden Lodge? Get the three bears that live next door, huh? Oh dear and God! And last on the list, uh, Mike Tyson has <laughs> uh, some cannabis gummies, some edibles uh, that look like ears. Um, <laughs> so if I eight. was allowed, uh, I. I I work for the government and have a clearance, so I'm not allowed to indulge in this kind of thing. But if I was, I would be ordering some Mike Tyson ears. I'm shocked <laughs> at you, Jedi. Shocked. Yeah, is it, that's that's the. By the way, the headline there is Mike Tyson's actual tweet quote of uh, "These ears actually taste good." Um, so yeah, actually, I, I guess uh, it's not Mike Tyson's ear though. <laughs> actually, be. It's, I, uh, Holy I, I hope Holyfield. Yeah, it's the Holyfield. It's a band of Holyfield's ear. Like uh, supposed to be uh, you know, bit. yeah. I wonder. I wonder if Hollyfield's getting any royalties out of this. He should. It's his ear right there. Yeah, yeah. A little but, uh, bite out of it. Uh, good, good for Mike. He's diversifying. Uh, you, just, you, you, you yeah. just can't keep fighting Paul Brothers. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to do something. So. You know, anywhere to make money, man. You know, cannabis sells, man. People are buying cannabis all over the place, and you make it shape gummy cannabis. You got worms. You got alligators. You can have everything. You know what I'm saying? I I just still love the fact that Mike Tyson raises pigeons, um, mm. yeah, and race and races pigeons. Uh, that that that's that was crazy. one of my that's one of my favorite side Mike Tyson stories um, uh, of his life. Those well, pigeons. I crazy. grew up down the block from him. Good for Mike. And his base man. He, Mike, Mike used to else. bully you, Bruce. For that, what I'm hearing, he I was like... much younger than than Mike Tyson. Thank you uh, very much. <laughs> Mike Tyson's gonna be 57. Really? Yeah. So. And you're gonna be like 58. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you eight right here. No. Uh, so that is why the, would news? the violence. Why would the vi- the violence, the words violence, of using inches? I don't want that shit, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that I, is I got receipts. God damn it. Jedi, seats. <laughs> you have the driver's seat, sir. Oh, uh, so for this week, that's not a comic sale of the week. Uh, but I started off, I started off looking at one thing, and and this is just kind of where I landed. I can't even remember what I started looking for, I, and I just kind of like this fell into one of Joe's rabbit holes, and this is kind of where I ended up for uh, souvenirs. From uh, Disney and, um, in this case, Universal. So the first one, Haunted Mansion, Disney, like Disney World, Disneyland uh, souvenir photo album uh, from the 1970s. <clears throat> came with 12 photos inside this album. Uh, sold for $150 <laughs> on a best offer uh, a week <laughs> or so ago. 
That's not bad. Uh, some, bucks. Of the, some of the pictures are pretty cool. Yeah. That's not bad. 100 bucks, man. 150 bucks. A lot of things. Yeah, and this is from the 70s, too, because yeah. you, you'd probably pay close to $80 for something like that at Disney probably. nowadays. But this was in the yeah, 70s. So I assume it wasn't nearly as expensive. Probably not. Probably five bucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the middle one's pretty cool, I thought. Uh, Disneyland stamp book from 1956. 32 mm. pages of 50 full-color stamps, uh, all of which are intact and unused. That's nice. Uh, not a bad price for a 1956 for something that's uh, basically untouched, unused, <laughs> untore, un, you know, by kids or whatever. Probably bought for a kid back in the day. $145 fixed price back in uh, mid-March, so a couple of weeks ago. Uh, pretty, you know, we're always, uh, we, we talk a lot of time about how surprised we are some of these old things survive time and hands and kids. And so something like this to kind of go, it does have a little browning around the edges, it looks like, but for something like this to go, to be fully intact, like yeah. 70, almost 70 years later, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. The, the stamps were uh, probably affixed in the book. Yeah. Don't lick the stamps and, and now; may kill you. They probably know. weren't. They probably weren't <laughs> yeah. loose in there, so that they would fall out, which probably helped them stay in there. But uh, still, to right. have anything like that intact yeah. is some don't lick the stamps. What was that a uh, Seinfeld episode where uh, Actually, what's his name killed his, killed his fiance? <laughs> killed his fiance. Uh, lastly, we had this was a little more uh, closer to today's date, although you know. What, 30 years ago 20 20 30 years ago uh a day in the lot a day in the park with barney my kids loved barney back when they were very 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 young uh this is in fact we actually went and saw a barney uh show at the, in seattle one time but anyway uh this is from universal studios barney, the nice. official souvenir book 1996 listed as in good condition sold for 200 dollars on a fixed price uh but you see couple, about a week or so ago you so. see that's crazy now so something that's from the 90s is going to be worth a lot more than something in the 70s which is kind of funny i know the yeah this could have just been some yeah. of these some of these could be just outliers uh somebody just liked barney and was like hey i really want this and just bought it on a on a on a whim but uh yeah something like this selling for more than that disney 1956 disney book of stamps is a little a little, a little odd to me, but I know exactly. And like I said, you got you got to look at the type of people that buy a lot of collectibles, oh, cool. or normally people that are our age or a little bit younger. You know, maybe the thirties to fifties, and you know, for them, this is something that was from their childhood. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. See, 1970s, I was born in the 70s, so that actually uh, close to my heart of uh, my lifespan of uh, growing up, which that's what I, you know, those are the things I like. I like things that are in my life. Like, I'm going to tell you this, to be honest, I'm very blessed. Like, we are very blessed that we were born in this time period because the stuff that we had growing up and in this time period, awesome. I gotta see the uh, the thing is like uh, the way Dom feels about this stuff from the 70s, you know, the, this 1996 uh, Barney souvenir book, like I said, my kids liked it when they were little. My, my oldest is 30. Uh, so you got to figure anywhere from like mid 20s to mid upper 30s, maybe mid 30s. This is this is that Barney's Barney is that that's their time. So now yeah, they're coming, yeah. they're getting jobs, they're coming into money, they want yeah. a little, they're right. starting to think about their own mortality or whatever drives people yeah, to right. collect nostalgia stuff. And yeah, so I don't know. We're gonna probably see a lot of this stuff. You know, you know what makes me laugh like now? This. Well, can you say I'm sorry? Uh cosmic uh cosmic one. I tried working at Disney to put his up for thing up. Because he had long hair. He had long hair. Now look what's all working at Disney. I'm just saying that. I don't know. How many people you know that work at Disney? Um, I, actually, I, I I'm impressed. AOA actually, worked at Universal in '96, so uh, he he can uh, give us the scoop on Barney. Well, I'm just saying the he fact that AOA may have a stash you of these Barney souvenir books somewhere. Stop now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, makes, it, it makes you think, you know, when, when you're, when you pick up stuff like this, you know, all these little, just little souvenir books and stuff like that, when you go to shows and stuff like that. Some people just toss them and throw them away, but uh, hey, Cosmic, yeah. Cosmic One, you could actually probably uh, file a discrimination uh, report now. Uh, back in the day, you discriminated with the long hair. So. What are you going to do? Go back in time and file it? Hey, you can do it now because, like I said, <laughs> statue of limitations, Dom. Statue of limitations. They altered the trajectory of his life, Brucifer. He could have been somebody. He could have been working there. Exactly. He could have been Kathleen Kennedy. Hey, we're we're we're, at, we're Eskimo <laughs> brothers. Zaggy Zaggy and I are Eskimo brothers. It We've both been be. sandwich artists in some way. Just just make cosmic a woman and turn a gay. <laughs> wow. Well, all right, it was a good list of stuff. I understand. People, I, I I love when you do these Jedi because they're they're just things that we forget about a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people pick up programs that crap all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. sporting events shows stuff like that oh yeah uh, so it's uh it's always fun to remember yeah oh these things are out there uh, and it's always fun to kind of yeah. go down some of those uh, some i of those tell you one thing was really good there. uh you got may the fourth coming up and there's a lot of good stuff in the disney uh shop actually in disney not here you can try to order online but uh there's a pin that's coming. I'm actually very excited about. So we're not allowed. To, we're not allowed to talk about SW on here. Dom. One, one, one of those fig pins that's like the size of my forearm. No, no, no. It's actually a <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. It's an oversized <laughs> pin, but it's uh, it's the Baseball Holiday is? Special Boba Fett. Oh, nice. Did it. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, there's going to be eight million things <laughs> like there like there are every year for May the fourth. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody, nobody cranks out tchotchkes like uh, like Star Wars. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Now tonight we have a new game with sticks. Okay. So we're gonna be doing a new game tonight. Uh oh. Yep. Oh boy. Yeah. This is just <laughs> what I wanted. <laughs> Get ready for some fun, folks. <laughs> okay. So this week I decided to change up a little bit. It's still kind of a trivia game. Not really. So uh, so Qualified Justice League Dark Jumble Game. I've taken a few characters from Justice League Dark. I've jumbled up the letters. And oh. I'm, I'm going to tell you what power they have or ability. And you're going to tell me who the character is. No, I asked you to give it away. You shouldn't give the uh, what power they have because Bruce Fur will know. Just leave it out there. See if you're smart enough to put it together. <laughs> It's too late. It's already in the slide. To make something dirty. <laughs> uh, I don't have it on the go. I gotta make something out of this. Down, come on. Come on. Okay, okay. Right. You you ready, six? Yeah, let's go to the first one. All right. So I am a mystic fortune teller. Ah! Who am I? Madam Xanadu. Xanadu, madam. Yep. Yeah, might be easy. Might be easy. How you do is that a do you get the X and the U in there? So, or Xanadu, do Amanda, no, or is that Madam? Oh, yeah, Madam Xanadu. Xanadu. I like that movie of Louis Louis and John. Xanadu is great. I can use. I, I prefer I prefer Zardoz with uh, Sean Connery. Aquaman's so, the no, never mind. All right. <laughs> it's a little fishy. All right. And we'll, we'll roll on to the answer, which is yes. Xanadu. Xanadu. Adam Xanadu. Super and not the uh, Olivia Newton John up. version either. There, oh, Donald. so it's all. So I thought there was one line and then another line, but it's all jumbled between the two lines. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You failed to tell us that, Six. I said it was jumbled. I didn't think it think was how it was in the middle. <laughs> all right. I can transform into a mist, a bat, and a wolf. Who am I? Minerva, vampire the boss. Hmm. Yeah, I vampire. I I'm sorry. I think it's <laughs> Brian Bosworth, Mr. Vampire. I, I vampire. Uh, the whole damn show. Vampirel. No. Uh, uh, Plastic man. All right. Pimple and popper. the answer is no. Nope, ah, lost the slide. Oh, oh, yeah, lost the slide. 
Oh, 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 you, you can blame you can blame that one on me. I, I'm I, just saying, if this I, was SNS sticks, you'd yeah. be you'd be gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, this, this this one was all on me. This this was not on sticks. Wow, I got them loaded. I got them loaded in there backwards. I'm sorry. All right, can I cannot. Them? It was I vampire, by the way. I vampire. Yeah, it was I, it was I vampire. I cannot be seen or heard by most. Able to pass through objects, fly or float, and possess any living being. Who am I? Dead man. Dom's fart. Yep. I'm not uh, the ban. Ban. First of all, I'm not to ban you from answering questions within passing the, the first minute. Well, not let, that I mind. I, I know you know the answer. Well, Edna, let's hope, let's mom. hope, I, di let's hope I, di I didn't totally hose the. Is uh, it Maud? <laughs> <laughs> it's the answer is B. Arthur. <laughs> oh, I am B. Arthur. Let's, let's see what answer you got there. Huh? She was she was an extremely handsome extremely woman. handsome woman. She you was. leave her bay. I'm pretty sure I'll give you guys was... I'll give you guys one more second here so I can look at the deck to see how <laughs> bad dear. I I hosed I hosed the order of these. Holy Simon. <laughs> And it was dead man. It was dead man. Oh, that's two words? Dead man. Okay. There's no there's no hyphen in there. No, I think it's supposed to be one word. I have it at one word, but that's okay. Uh, I have a higher level of ability, agility <coughs> and physical strength. Who am I? I'm Tober. Not enough letters. And down. Damn. Dark. <laughs> no, Dirk. Oh. Dirk Diggler. No. Uh, <laughs> Can I answer? Can I answer? Dirk. Hold on, there, Bruce. Hold on. I get okay. Detective Petman. Oh, Wu Tang Clan. Wu Tang Clan. Well, ain't nothing to it. fuck with. That's okay. I mean, now I can answer. It's been okay, long Bruce. enough. Okay, Bruce. Detective Chimp. Oh. Yes, it is. Detective Shemp. You have to make these harder for Bruce for I mean I know I, know. I think you're well, I think you're right on target for the rest to of us. It out. <laughs> so sorry sorry we I I, I somehow lost the uh, amethyst uh yeah. slide that's, in that's there. Qu that's quite all right. I know you had tried to uh, <laughs> adjust it. Yeah, I pulled it in when I was putting Whoa. the deck together. Yeah. Pulled, it in. pulled it in. Pulled it in. Pulled it in. I didn't out. put it, it in. I didn't pull it out. Slowly pulled it out. Thank you. I like the word jumble. It's good stuff. We'll give it a try again. I'll, try, I'll make it a little harder next time. <laughs> Just make it wobble. I won't get any. Oh, no, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's the horse? All right. Let's look at some Justice League Dark. So... <laughs> With Justice League Dark, there were two early kind of proto justice league dark books where you had a group come together some of which ended up being in the justice league dark and that would be uh swamp thing 50 and swamp thing annual two so <laughs> these books both sell for about the same price uh it's back in the good old alan moore days uh but you had swamp thing the demon Phantom Stranger, you had Dead Man, Dr. Fate, Spectre, um, which, uh, again, some of which or most of which have <laughs> shown up or been in the Justice League Dark, but you didn't really actually get a Justice League Dark official team until 2011. And for some reason, I don't know, I enjoy Justice League Dark a lot. I like the dark mystical side of things. I like all the characters that they have, but they do not use Justice League Dark very often. You've only had two volumes of Justice League Dark since 2011. <laughs> and you think how many other series we've had where there have been reboots, and series here and series there and stuff like that. 
but you didn't really have Justice League Dark put together until 2011, which was a Madame Xanadu, Shade the Changing Man, Dark Man, Zatanna, uh, all pulled together by <laughs> Madame Xanadu. Um, the some of these books now, now that now that you have the Gun Universe and he's thrown out little Easter eggs every now and then. Uh, you're getting a lot of these books starting to kind of pop here and there. Mm -hmm. So um, the Justice League Dark book was starting to move a little bit. This is still extremely, extremely cheap for a number one uh, and really the first assemblage of this team. Uh, and again, you had the first print there with the, uh, with the green hood, the second print there with the red hood. Uh, you had... Five, I think, major story arcs. So the first story arc was In the Dark, which went up to issue six. Then you had a Rise of the Vampires story arc, which uh, was a crossover with I Vampire. And if you're unfamiliar with I Vampire, uh, there's some really cool covers mm, <laughs> in yeah. the I Vampire series. There's not there's there's not much to it. There's there's not much for this character in terms of, of solo stuff. But um, there, there's some some pretty cool covers in there. Uh, like I said, this this ran through a couple issues of I Vampire and uh, Justice League Dark, where you had this uh, vampire crossover storyline. Yeah. <clears throat> it's it, it, it's crazy how many. I, I mean, to me, I like it because I, I like Justice League Dark and a lot of these characters because a lot of them were kind of Vertigo characters as well. And DC Vertigo was one of the best things DC ever did uh, to this day. Uh, I mean, even even to someone who tends to prefer DC over Marvel in general, Vertigo was just the best. I mean, that that hit for me. I, I was a teenager at the time when all the Vertigo books were coming out. You know, it was a little more adult, a little darker. Um, mm -hmm. So it was nice to see all these characters pulled together for storylines. Uh, you had a Book of Magic storyline for a while. Uh, the Justice League Dark Number Zero uh, actually came out in the middle of the first volume. So Zero didn't come out before one. It came out after like I think issue like twelve. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a whole month of zeros at, at that time. Yeah, yeah. So if you see a zero, it's not an actual it's not an actual prelude to the series. It came out in the middle there. Uh, so you had a. a Book of Magic, uh, little uh, annual there as well. And then you had a Death of Magic storyline that ran through. Uh, and for the first, I'd say, uh, what, 20, be evil. 20 or so covers, because I th think this, uh, this first volume only went 40 issues. You didn't have a lot mm -hmm. of fancy covers and craziness in terms of ratios or incentives or a ton of different co covers for a lot of these until you got to some of the later part of the run. And that's when you started to get some of these more interesting covers here, like uh, 27 on the far right. Scribble dots. Uh, a handful of these, you would start to get uh, the black and white sketch cover, which was popular at the time as well. So you get a color, <laughs> a color, and then you would have a black and white sketch variant as well. Uh, the steampunk variant on 28 is always highly sought after. That's probably one of the coolest uh, Dead Man Zatanna and Constantine covers that you're going to find. Uh, again, they would have crossovers with Phantom Stranger, crossovers with Constantine. Uh, you have a great, you have a great robot chicken, uh, variant as well. The, uh, the Batman 66 variant is a lot of fun. If you're a collector of the bombshell series, you can pick up 32 and you got a Zatanna there. Uh, it's a good, good monsters month cover there with, with dead man and swamp thing and Constantine as well. You got a nice obligatory Lego cover with Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I, uh, I haven't seen that one before. I like that one. Uh, this nice one that is, uh, 
laid out the opposite way in landscape is a Darwin Cook cover. So if you're a Darwin Cook fan, uh, there is a Justice League Dark out book out there for you. And I, again, my favorite, one well, of my favorite Justice League Dark covers is still this Beetlejuice homage. It's still one of the one of my favorite covers. It's fantastic. Dead Dead Man as Beetlejuice there is just hilarious. Because Dead Man covers are normally pretty pathetic. He's always like screaming or looking sad or whatever. It's one of the rare Dead Man covers where it's just kind of hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, small little booster gold on that one too. And you know, I figured I'd go through the first volume and then we'd take a little break through here and kind of look at some of the characters that are in Justice League Dark and some of the either relevant books or lesser known books that are in there uh, for some of these characters. So uh, Madam Xanadu, who pulls together the Justice League Dark, uh, that Doorway to Nightmare is her first cover and book and appearance. Uh, it's a fantastic book. That Madam Xanadu in the middle there, that little limited one shot is fantastic as well. Uh, you get some Brian Bolin stuff in both of those, which is fantastic. And then she had her own solo series, which went, I think, about 20 or so issues, which has a lot of really great covers in it. It's still really, really dirt cheap as well. You can, you can find most of those really reasonable. Uh, Zatanna, you know, we did a spotlight on Zatanna a little while back. Uh, so I just kind of pulled out three of my more favorite covers. And of course, she first shows up in Hawkman 4, but her best Silver Age cover is Justice League uh, 51. That cover with Batman, that's hands down the best Zatanna cover because she's not on the cover of her own first appearance in Hawkman 4. And the appearance she has in uh, Green Lantern isn't half bad, but the cover's not a great Satana cover. She's on it. It's not bad. And the cover that she's in in the Atom as well, those first few appearances, is nice, but it's it's not great. It's just a little, little bit of Satana. So if you're looking for a good Silver Age book, Justice League 51 is the way to go. Uh, DC Superstars of Magic, still one of my favorite Satana books around uh, – Always difficult to find in higher grade. Um, very accessible in middle grades now. It's gone down in price since the pandemic a bit. But uh, the high grades always always sell um, and go for, for a good bit of money as well. And of course, can't talk about Zatanna without throwing in a Hughes cover. So uh, Zatanna 16. Even though I like 15 better, I figured I'd throw 16 in there. We've, we've seen enough of 15 with foil covers. Talking to you, Bruce. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, have, I have the original <laughs> signed by Hughes somewhere <laughs> over there. Uh, Doctor Strange, or, or sorry, uh, Dead Man shows up in uh, Strange Adventures. His first appearance is in 205, but I truthfully like the Neil Adams covers uh, for Dead Man a little better. So the, what, the first, I think the first and maybe the second, the first cover for Dead Man in 205 is not Neil Adams, but Neil Adams is the one who really made Dead Man famous with his covers. So there's some really cool Strange Adventures covers in there in that low 200s run uh, with some just amazing Neil Adams covers. And Raw, these are still very, very affordable books. Uh, there's a great Brave and the Bull cover as well with Batman. And one of my favorite fun little series, which again, still dirt cheap, is the Flashpoint, the Dead Man and the Flying Grayson series. It has a great set of covers, which are fantastic. There's a cover that looks like an homage to uh, the old uh, Weekly World News Bat Boy cover as well, uh, <laughs> with, with him on the cover. <laughs> but um, there, there's some really fun covers in there. and It's, it's a good little read. There was so many uh, crossovers with that. Yeah. Uh, Constantine, uh, you know, Saga of Swamp Thing 37 is his first appearance, but he does have a cameo in Saga of Swamp Thing 25, <laughs> which gets forgotten about sometime. 
And truthfully, I love the cover of Saga of Swamp Thing 25. Um, it's just a great damn cover. It's a far better cover than Saga 37. So that's where you'll actually get a little peek of John Constantine uh, as a cameo. Uh, of course, he had the Hellblazer series, which unheard of nowadays when 300 issues. Uh, you know, you, you don't see that anymore. So oh. I bookended there and threw the first one and the uh, and three, number 300 there for the final issue. Good old Swamp Thing. Uh, first appearance, House of Secrets, 92. Uh, but the self-titled Swamp Thing, that first cover is fantastic. It's a classic, Yay. classic cover. It's a great book. I might have that laying around. <laughs> um, but then you had these uh, DC, uh, the DC special series uh, that came out as well. At one point, they would always feature different uh, different characters in each issue. But I think fourteen, seventeen, and twenty had Swamp Thing, and seventeen and twenty high graded. Uh, if you have them slabbed, uh, go for it. A good bit of money, you know, several hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, but these are books that sometimes get forgot about, and sometimes you can, sometimes you can find them every now and then um, for a reasonable price. Uh, Shade the Changing Man uh, well, first appeared way back in '77. Uh, Steve Ditko, I believe, created Shade the Changing Man, uh, but the kind of the, the vertigo style of shade, the changing man uh, <laughs> that later came uh, is the one that you kind of see through justice league dark. You don't, you don't see, you don't see the weird guy with, with the, with the weird outfit. Um, you see the guy with the weird sport coat. So I had to throw the old vertigo jam in there as well, which is, which is just a, a, a great, great, cover and book and just just brings me back to my youth in terms of what i enjoyed reading comic books you know, just it's kind of uh those fun vertigo covers detective uh, chimp oh, go ahead bruce uh, detective chimp yeah i love, I love detective so, chimp so fun he is he first appears in channel 52 issue five um good luck finding that it's a weird book to, it's a weird book to search for and find it just seems to never really come up. Uh, there is a Detective Chimp case book, which is a trade paperback as well. And he's also featured in the Shadow Pact series as well. So if you want to read up more on Detective Chimp, there's not a ton, but there are some things out there. Uh, Phantom Stranger's probably been around the longest of any of these these characters since he was introduced in like 1953 um so he's been around for a while of course uh, the showcase book is is always sought after for people trying to pick up those those good showcase books in that first 100 issues of showcase <laughs> and then some of the other fun characters that show up uh the demon shows up uh quite a bit, especially in the second volume of, uh, of, uh, just League dark. Uh, you have his current form really DC will credit his current form to being in demon Knights, but he was a older Kirby creation. And then you got Frankenstein. Frankenstein shows up here and there and everywhere. Uh, I had to throw in the young monsters in love cover cause it's, it, it is by far my favorite Frankenstein cover um, because Swamp Thing is making out with his lady and Frankenstein is very pissed. So it's just a good one. That Seven Soldiers series has some good covers too. That, that It's a great Frankenstein cover. It's a good series. I like that series. Yeah. yeah. And again, some other characters that have shown up, the, the newer Dr. Fate, Ragman, Amethyst, Man Bat all have shown up and been part of Justice League Dark in varying roles, both large and small. Man Bat showed up in the most recent volume quite a bit. 
Dr. Fate shows up quite a bit. Ragman, Amethyst here and there. And then you have the most recent run, which was 2000, start 2019, 18. Um, this is, if you're a Tinian fan, you get some nice early Tinian writing. Uh, this volume was written by Tinian. So uh, it has a great, uh, you got Wonder Woman. It's not really a crossover because it doesn't happen in the Wonder Woman title at all. So you basically have Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark, but it's not a crossover book. And Justice League very, Justice League Dark very rarely crosses over. If they do, it's every now and then with another kind of Justice League Dark character book here and there for an issue or two, but there's no major events. There's no major, major crossovers where this, where them as a team kind of uh, crosses over and does major events with, uh, with other series. Uh, you got some really good Clayton Crane covers uh, through this run of Justice League Dark as well. So if you like kind of those bigger single character uh, pictures, there's a handful of covers to get your Swamp Thing fix or your Detective Chimp fix or my case is a Tana fix. Uh, the nice thing about this volume is this is right when DC started to do the A cover with a trade dress and then the B cover cardstock with a minimal trade dress. So you get a lot of really good covers with the minimal trade dress. They were only a dollar more. So it's not like they're virgin covers. It's not like they're ratios or anything like that. So they're all still very affordable as well. And you had a nice appearance of Animal Man throughout this, this volume as well. And again, this only ran 29 issues. So it's it's one of those properties that they haven't driven into the ground with DC. I think there's there there's a lot that they can do with it because they haven't done a lot with it. So they have a, a lot of room to move around with uh, <laughs> all these characters and having them teamed up in this way. Uh, that series did also have a annual. So you got one annual out of the second volume as well with two covers, trade dress and a minimal trade dress. Uh, if you're a fan of DC animation, there is a Justice League Dark animated series and the Justice League Dark uh, Apocalypse War as well, which uh, are both pretty good series. Uh, I'm a big fan of DC animation. Uh, always enjoy DC animation and to be able to get these characters Animated was a lot of fun to have them all together. And these are mature watching. These are for kids. No, they're definitely definitely not. Well, no. Most DC animation really isn't mm -mm. for kids. Even though the animation style feels childlike sometimes when you're watching it, it's, it's a weird adjustment to make when you watch DC animation. Because you start to watch a lot of these and you're like, oh, this, this kind of feels kiddish. And then the material and the language comes in and you're like, Oh, okay. No, this yeah, is yeah, you this silly is rabbit tricks for kids. Yeah. <laughs> but I enjoy that. I enjoy that. They make these, they, they're not making these for children. They're making them for us. Uh, and they take the time and put together some good fun stories. And if you are a toy collector, you can slowly collect some of the characters and put together your own little justice league dark. If you like, uh, there's Dead Man. You got some, there are tons of swamp things that are out there. Uh, there's tons of Zatanna's out there, but there is a just a specific Justice League Dark Zatanna, which is nice. Uh, there's a Page Punchers uh, for Constantine, which is nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was horrible. There is no Detective Chimp action figure. Yes, this bad. this is yes. this is like a sculpt that is painted that's that's the best you're gonna get with detective chimp if you like I like detective it. chimp I like it and then then i was really surprised there wasn't i couldn't find a madam xanadu action figure anywhere all they have is this little mini mini fig um hero clicks yeah. yeah that's all they had and i was for for how many action figures they're constantly putting out for dc 
Drew McFarlane and everything else. No Madam Zam do. So and of course you can get your demon. There you go. And good old man bat. That's that's probably one of the best man bat sculpts that I've seen in a long time. I mean the one thing you could say about McFarland is they take their time and they they get those sculpts right. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They they definitely take their time with it. They're not it's, rushing it's, it to the store and yeah, it, so. it's rare that they crap the bed on a figure. Um, yeah, they do every now and then, but it's 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 pretty rare, and they're reasonable. They're always pretty reasonable out of the gate too. They're not they're not uh, wallet busters. I think the the regulars are twenty, and the like the gold labels are like thirty. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, they're, and, they're, they're pretty cheap, but great yeah. quality. But it still sucks. It's too much money, man, for plastic. A piece of plastic. Really? You what? Star Wars figures are two dollars on the rack, man. It should be two dollars always, man. I'm sorry about that. This is bullshit. All these toys are that much money. Are yeah. you look at, look behind you? Really? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. Just worry about the fact of what I'm saying. That's it. Hey, sometimes it, 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 if you if you want to assemble a team and you're a toy collector, I am not a toy collector. But if you want to put together a Justice League Dark. You want the person who put together the Justice League Dark. You want your Madam Xanadu. Yeah. So, yeah. You make a Madam Xanadu and it's limited to 20 Rob pieces? Is, I, I, don't, I don't need 752 spawns, but they make them. You know. Well, listen. Oh, one one Madam Xanadu. No, listen, McFarlane probably will make it down the road. He's making the figure. He's making obscure characters with his other line anyway, so you might get that down the road. Yeah, he's doing a Boba Fett next week. And you did, Robin? and you actually, you had yeah, in rib. live action, you actually had a Madam Xanadu, I believe, in the Swamp Thing series. So mm -hmm. uh, you actually even had her in live action. Um, but no dice in the toy universe. So with that, uh, Jedi, uh, you're up, buddy. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to try this out, see how it works. Uh, oh, this yeah. is a simple down version of what you might recognize being similar to the old family feud show. It's not even, I think it's still on. Uh, qualified feud. So I'll get into the rules uh, really quick. I had to put Richard Dawson on this. Probably the greatest. Steve Harvey is great. Uh, Steve Harvey actually may be the You're not, you're not a Richard Karn fan? <laughs> Uh, Richard Dawson all the way, but Steve Harvey is really, really no, good. Richard Steve Dawson Harvey may even be better. Got but, overlooked by huh? HR with his sexual harassment and all those damn kisses of all the women. Yeah, That's he would just bit. kiss you right on the mouth. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> he didn't give a shit back then. Yeah, we had him. We had the well, the other guy. I don't know how many the Roy, Was it Roy Combs? <laughs> the white-haired guy? No, no, he was a younger guy who. Uh, there, to me, the to me, it was so Richard much. Dawson, oh. and then I didn't even I care anything had, about uh, it. Have you said guy Lewis? Yeah, you, you you had Louis Lewis. Anderson Louis briefly. Anderson. Yeah. All right, P. Yeah, that's funny. all right. So this show, the way we're going to do this is, I need to kind of rearrange some folks here a little bit. Actually, uh -oh. there we go. Uh, hang on, I'm getting there. There we go a little bit. All right. Yeah, All right, so what happened? What happened? Nothing. So Dom Tober is going yeah. to be the contestant. So actually, everybody, everybody's going to be the contestant on here, but Dom is going to start us off. Uh, so Dom's going to Dom is going. It, you're going to be give you know you're going to be giving a, a family feud style question. Okay. Top five answers are going to be on the door on the board as selected by 100 people. Hell no, as selected by me. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna move on from there. So Let's first, here we go. Name something. This is for Dom. Name <laughs> something. What? Name <laughs> something Boba Fett might do on his day off. Something Boba Fett might do on his day off. You get three strikes, Joe. Can you handle the strikes? I got Dom him. is going to get three strikes. If he doesn't get it, we're going to move to sticks. Uh, Brucifer, if no one, none of them gets it, all Joe has to get is one, and he takes it. He takes it. All right, listen, all I know is 
something he might do in his day off. And listen, after a hard days of uh, bounty hunting and stuff like that, I can relate. Rest. Definitely rest. So you're saying... Good answer. Take good Not answer. a good answer. Good Not answer. a good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Nap in the back to take. Very good. All right. All right. Oh, no, no. No. oh no strike. No strike. Sorry. No strike. No, you got it. Oh, Nap in the back. To back to the drive. Rigged. Yeah. Rigged. Rigged. All right. So, I tell you what. I tell you what. We're going to – Sticks, you go ahead. You're next. We'll just go down the line. Sticks, you go down the line. All right. Uh, Name Boba something Fett Boba Fett might do on his day off. Um, sit around and count his money that he got from all his bounty. Let's go on. Sit around. Good answer. Good answer, Sticks. Good answer. Good answer. Who brought this money? <laughs> Give him a strike. Nope. That's not an no, answer. No. no. Strike one. Oh. <laughs> All right. So Bruce, weird. first up to you. Something Boba Fett might do on his day off. Ride a Vespa. Oh, good answer. Good answer. Ride good a Vespa. Good answer. Ride a Vespa. You get the obligatory family good answer. There? No, it's not. Give him another strike. What? Oh. Ooh, rigged. All right, Dom, it's back to you. Uh, you don't want another strike, or Joe's going to get a chance to steal. No. Back to me? I'll tell you what. Maybe. Uh, no, freaking, no one uh, knows Boba Fett like Dom. Give us something Boba Fett might do on his day off. On his oh. day off? Finally, get the ass that he wants. You know, gotta get a little uh, action going because he's always busy. What? Uh, okay. Took my answer. I was gonna say butt fun. This is why he's not a bounty hunter. Dom will fail. Hey, hey, you gotta get some ass too, man. It's all about IP opportunity. Is Boba Fett going to fornicate on his day off? Survey says. Yes, he's going to polish his helmet. Close enough. What? Right? <laughs> Ooh. The there you go. Good word. There you go. It, it's a little solo action, but uh, he's going to polish yeah. his helmet. All right. Uh, Two strikes. Sticks. Where'd Sticks go? Sticks is gone. Sticks in. Okay. There so Sticks, I'm back. two strikes. Two answers right. left. Three answers left on the board. <laughs> Two strikes. If you get this right, we keep going. If not, Joe gets a chance to steal. Name something Boba Fett might do on his day off. Um, let's go with uh, we already said Thomas. Um, um, lounge around in his uh, Mandalorian. Trunks. The, the audience can help you, although I don't know if they're being a lot of help right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. What was your answer, Sticks? Did you have an answer? I, I, I said he's going to lounge around in his Mandalorian trunks. Lounge around in his yeah, Mandalorian good answer, good answer. trunk. <laughs> Is it up there? No, it's not. Three strikes. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm all right, Joe's Doolin gets a chance to steal. Joe, all you got to do is get one of these to take home absolutely nothing. Name something Boba Fett might do on his day off. I know if I was Boba Fett and I had a day off, I would go bowling with Dangar. There you go. Is it <laughs> bowling with Dangar? Oh, 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 I have to pull up three strikes again. <laughs> All right. Let's see what was up there. Let's see. At the at number five, what did Boba Fett do on his day off? Wash and wax slave oh, one. There you, go. Yeah, okay. there you go. That makes sense. At number four. Selfies with Dom and the dog. <laughs> hey, what? Hey. Okay. A dog. Uh, dog's a dog. <laughs> this is worse than Sticks trivia. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't believe no one got this. At number two, what milk? does what would Boba Fett do on his day off? He's gonna drink some boba tea. You know what? I might have I might have said that because he's back to me. So I got two of them. <laughs> 
Yes, you're carrying a team. Good job. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> good stuff good stuff i liked it i, I am embarrassed it. for this show <laughs> i thought it was good i like that hey we like we like to try new things so, uh, no and it went off without a hitch I, it, it was I, I, I can't believe it actually went off without any glitches what, no it's good stuff it's good stuff oh yeah um, let's let's uh we got a few minutes let's do our pickups pickups i'll go first yeah. Forgot forgot all about pickups. We did so. No wonder we no wonder we're early. We forgot there that. We go. Ah. go ahead. Go ahead, Bruce. I, 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 I know, I know, I know I know we have to we have to get off at eleven thirty so the wrestling boys can talk about wrestling yeah. and men rolling yeah, around fun. together. Hmm. All right, first up, I picked up um Xena the Warrior Princess. Nice little Dave Stevens. Nice, still for that's still minty affordable cover. Stevens book. Little minty. Mm. Yay! Um, a little DV8, number one. Another nice. Hughes and Stevens. Hughes and Stevens. Mm. Hughes did the the reflection, correct? Yes. All right. And then I got this from Kyle from SNS. Little Modern Warfare Ghost number one. Nice. There you go. Uh, Robin 25 DCU. Nice. Was that one you're missing or just uh yes, it was one of the missing. You need graded nice. now, right? It looks uh good. probably. You know, I'd probably get like a an A5, maybe a nine. Are you Six. looking to get all nine eights? No, right? You just look at this. No, I don't like... care about nine eights. Okay. As long as they're in the high nines. Okay. Um Guy Gardner Warrior number 26, DCU. One I was missing. Ooh, yeah. That's the only reason to buy a Guy Gardner book. Yes. How many <laughs> more do you need that? I'm How missing two people? more of Guy Gardner than I have all of Guy Gardner. I'm missing 30 exactly. Mm. Then I got DCU two pack. Oh, nice. And crack it. Crack it open. And, and the back, it's one that I was missing. Wonder Woman 92. Golden cover. What? You get that for a good price? Oh, I got I got it for half the price it sold for last time. Which is I still a lot I of money. You are <laughs> still a lot of money. <laughs> nice, nice. There you go. And, uh, and finally, oh, another DC oh, two more pack. Bowling. There you go. Now, let me tell you, this, the last time this pack sold, it was like close to $900. Ooh, and not because of this book, but because of this book. Damn. And I did not pay nine hundred dollars for this. Trust me. Let me. So are you gonna crack those and uh, wind up uh, grading? Yeah, those? I'm gonna crack them and press them. All right. Junk. One of the more <laughs> rare DCU variants. These put are in the shredder. Put it in the shredder. <laughs> you see this? This I could buy and sell you with this um, arm <laughs> six. You could buy right. you could buy a twelve foot crocodile with that. Uh... And that is it. I'm done. <laughs> oh really? Oh. Nice. Oh my uh, god. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> god, I gotta go watch some Sanford and Son. Who wants to go next? I can go next. Uh, All right, let me throw you up here. Yep, I can go next. Um picked up a couple on um, the whatnots. Ooh. Picked up a couple uh Godzilla books this week. Nice. nice. Gojira. This one I think I or, uh, this one I think I already had, but that's okay. How many triples and quadruples do you have of books? <laughs> a lot. A I lot. get that. A lot. I got this um, Slabbed Heroes uh, Dark Horse IDW crossover of Transformers and Robo um, Terminator version. I like that cover. Oh, I like cover. Yep. Didn't have that one. I picked up this one. I wasn't sure if this. I, I think this was from the the series. Now I don't think it was the Kickstarter, but I picked up a copy of uh, Guma, number one. Yeah, so is Micah. Cover. Yeah, I figured, why not? I'll give it a try. I'll give it a read. And then because of all the hype of the the latest movie, I decided to pick up uh, some Ghostbusters. There you go. 
I think I got the right one. I think I got the right one. It's the cartoon Ghostbusters. With the gorilla. (laughs) With the gorilla. The the original (laughs) Ghostbusters. They're based on the original uh, TV show with uh, Larry Stork and uh, those guys. So, yeah. Those were my pickups this week. Stuff. Who's up next? I got one. Go. Hey, I'll throw it. I got you. Hold on. Oh, you want me to go? Um, okay. I just got yeah, one thing. Yeah. <laughs> I love now listen, everybody says uh, I take a long time opening the packages. It's all open already. Here you go. Jeez. I mean, this is what I got. It's like there's going to be a, an eclipse on Monday. <laughs> so I'm actually very happy to get this. You know, Super 7, you know, they have the ultimate uh, like G.I. Joe or uh, the line. I got the Zartan. There you go. Animated, the animated Zartan, which is pretty cool. I know you love your Zartans. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, so, uh, and you know what's funny? They actually canceled the third series, the third line, uh, Wave. They canceled them. So whoever ordered them got their money back. So I don't know if they're, they're going to make more. And I know that this is probably going to go up because. What was in the third line? The third line was uh, Lady J, uh, I mean, Scarlet, uh, the Baroness, uh, I think there it is. Doc. Doc and somebody else. Um, mm. they're, they're idiots. See, you have a baroness coming. Yeah, and they canceled the line. I don't know what, if they canceled it uh, because maybe uh, it didn't get a lot of uh, buyers, but it Pre-orders, just, uh, yeah. who knows? But all I know is I'm happy with my Zartan. That's it. I don't need the rest of the lines done for me. I don't care. Yeah. Right. Oh, so if the Panther comes yeah. out, who knows? But we'll see what happens. Jedi. Uh, so I forgot to show these last week, but uh, I got the Vampirilla. Vampirilla. Oh, nice! I like I like the the ultraviolet color ones. Uh, also, also picked up uh, so the Mike a couple of them. Oh, yeah, that one. Women's nice. history, man. but uh, I don't I don't think I've showed this yet. But this is a, a metal metal cover, Pocahontas metal cover from Zerdy. I'm so dirty. Oh, I have to poke that, Hannes. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> man, I disavow, disavow, disavow. That's all right. It's after 11 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> some more Zerdy. I picked up, I got some more Zerdy stuff in, uh, signed. Uh, Harley. Nice. nice. Cool. Uh, You're picking up more DC than I am. Let's not go too far. Hey, DC vampire versus vampire. <laughs> Dirty does a lot of DC. Yeah, nice yeah. covers. That, that DC versus vampire series is so good. So good. Uh, what is this? This one is uh, damn it, I can't remember the name of the title. You guys will know. No, Dirty, Department uh, of Truth. Department of Truth. Truth. Yeah, thank you. Department of Truth. Dirty. The uncut steak variant. Yeah, uh, cut steak variant. Uh, this is probably just a. I don't know what. I don't know what this is. A, steak. <laughs> Shut <Yeah>. up. <laughs> Zerdy, uh, I, I, this, I believe uh, that's Red Sonia. I think it's Red Sonia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it might, it might be. That. It might be an art book. I'm not sure. I'm not going to open it and see. But I don't know. Um, and then uh, we have a Infinite Crisis Zerdy. Nice. Oh, is that one's already. It's good, Wonder one. Woman. All right. oh, multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. My dog was howling outside, so I had to mute myself. And then uh, I didn't know Zerdy did these, but uh, this might be one of my new favorite Zerdy covers. I may have to when CGC gets their their grading, their JSA grading stuff. This one may get submitted. I didn't know Zerdy did a dark red cover, but this is a oh really nice. Cool. That cool is very nice. Cover. Nice. Yeah. That is a great cover. And that's all I got for this week. Yeah, nice. There you go. Right. I will run clean up here. Save the best of last, huh? Uh, let's see. So I got a couple things from across the pond. Uh, mm-hmm. This is uh, uh, Richard Morgan. Uh, all these are, he does, everything's hand painted, his covers. Uh, this this uh, Blam and Glam series I've enjoyed quite a bit. Um he always packs it full of fun things too as well some prints uh he does most of the covers but 
He's been having recently uh, Bang Bez, who's one of my also favorite artists, uh, doing uh, covers for that as well. Enjoyed that. I got a little uh, Street Fighter huh. from Udon. Nice. A little foot fetish cover there. I know, Joe. Maybe, go. maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, got feet. Joe's gonna buy it. Some more yeah. Udon, Udon uh, exclusives. What did Joe doesn't like life though? This is yeah. uh this is a <laughs> Panzer. <laughs> and uh, another nice red Sony exclusive Ayo. there from Udon. Relax, that I have blood pressure. And Ooh. then I got my stuff from Sosa Mica, so I got my little authenticity certificate there, but got some signed Sosa Mica. Yeehaw! Some signed Sosa Mica. And some signed Sosa Mica. Yeah, I had never ordered from her store directly before, which I'm guess I'm glad I did because I guess there was there was some back and forth about her signed books or whatever, um, and some assistants doing something. But uh, well, I don't know much about that. But uh, apparently, if you order from her store, you're fine. So ordered from her store, so I'm fine. I'm not going to get any of those authenticated or send them in to get graded because I'm too lazy and cheap to do all that shit. So uh, those will just go on the PC. Cool. So that's what I got for this week. Look at this. Uh, it's miscut. Oh, my. I, yeah. I, I got to throw, throw you up there so, so we can all see. Holy crap. Wow. That's bad. How bad that is. But isn't this some? Is that a, uh, that's a manufacturer, whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can still get a good grain. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they won't blame me for trimming that. So it's not that, really, not really miscut. Stars. They just misaligned it whenever they stapled it. Looks yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. Thank you, Brent. Bastards. Well, it's better than the Superboy Nine that I got. That was no, it's a one on one, Brewster. You got a one on uh, one. Yeah, it's better than the Superboy Seven I got. It was missing three pages. Three pages. Not oh, the book. It's, it's just the way uh, Bruce likes his comics uncut. Or overcut it. Hmm. Miscut. Oh, that's the same way I like my um okay. sausage on my um heroes. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Yeah. What were you hurt. thinking? What were you thinking, Dom? Get your mind out oh. of the gutter. What? <laughs> What's up about if sausage you... and peppers? What is wrong with you, Dom? Jeez. If you what haven't if you haven't done so it? yet, please you subscribe to. to Renovision. Please subscribe to <laughs> Bruce at Kingdom of Nerds underscore. Don't forget the underscore. Uh, please like the video if you oh, enjoyed likes. it. Likes um, help. Please uh, oh, leave yeah. comments on the YouTube comments after the video for anything you'd like to see from Jedi's Not a Comic Sale or a Spotlight or uh, whatever the hell. Just just throw some comments in there of stuff <laughs> that you'd like to see. Because uh, Suggest a game, too. I mean, if you like what we're doing with games question. and want to suggest your own game. For us to do, come up we with Scrabble. You do that. Scrabble? I, I would. I would I'm love for us to be able to somehow do a pressure luck, but uh, that seems way overly complex. Or high card. Hmm. Or with comics. Shot. I'll work on that one. Ask the chat if they like to see me do a uh, toy, uh, like the new toys or stuff like that. Are you doing your own I'd slides? love to see you do new toys. Yeah. That I give you a chance to work on slides, Dom. Ooh. Yeah, Dom. Yeah, Dom. You can work on slides. <laughs> there you go. I'll work on some slides. There you go. Mouth and nice. third foot. <laughs> Jesus. You gotta eat those words, everybody. Uh -huh. I would I would love to see some toys. I I'd be happy because I don't I it's not it's not my wheelhouse. The toys are not my wheelhouse. They're your wheelhouse, so I would be happy to uh, right. see some toys. So I uh, let's see. Uh we're making in time for wrestling. Oh my god. Yeah, That's tonight scary. I guess apparently there is a impromptu Renovision stream where they're gonna talk wrestling. Um, wrestling predictions is what it way I understand it. They're going to predict yes, for, WrestleMania for for the for, for inside the, the square circle. There you go, for the, baby. For the sweaty boy soap opera on Saturday, I think you'll get Sunday. more Dom Tober if that's what you're itching for. Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> outside of that, tomorrow, 
tomorrow. You can tune yes, in. Yes, I'm going to be there making fun of Dom. SNS <laughs> uh, on Saturdays. I will uh, be on SNS on Saturday. You will be? I will really? be. The, really? The triumphant really? return of Brucifer to wait, SNS wait, on a Saturday. Wait. We get earthquakes in New York, and now we got yeah. Brucifer back on SNS. What <laughs> the hell? I was invited back for a guest appearance. Hey. Hey. Mad, mad world we live in. Someday the Dark Side Boys are on. Bruce, you doing a show I will Sunday be or not? Jeopardy decide... on tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, are, you, are you doing the questions, or are you just hosting it? No, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> Are you our new Lopez? <laughs> Until he gets fired. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep talking. You'll be fine. <laughs> Bruce, you doing talking. a show Sunday? Um, I haven't decided yet because of WrestleMania. It, if I do, it'll probably be like 7 p.m. So, uh, there you, go. you know, this way we can look at some FOC. If I do do a show and the Flaming Hot covers of the week. There you go. Uh... Also, Sunday night, uh, follow the boys, watch the Dark Side show for everything Star Wars. Monday, Bruce, Monday show? Yes, we're going to do a Monday show. Screw there it. The, I know it's Raw, the, the Raw after, after WrestleMania. Us. I know. WrestleMania, but it's always a great show. So. Dom, you better be there because you can watch it on the Rewind after the show. Well, I'm going to watch it as I do the show. How if we're that? all still here after the, uh, eclipse. Yeah, after the solar eclipse. The eclipse. Hey, the eclipse. We're going to go into another dimension. Don't worry about it. It's funny. I had doctor's appointments. If the on Anunnaki Monday. don't all take us away to uh, to wherever. I had doctor's uh, appointments on Monday. They all canceled. I'm like, you bastards. I had two doctor's appointments today. Guess what I did? Didn't go to both of them because I was too lazy <laughs> to go back uptown where I work every goddamn day. I need a rest. Rest day. End of story. I got yeah. you. Need, to, need to be able to stay home and polish your helmet. That's it. God. <laughs> Uh, Wednesday, don't forget to watch the boys on tack, always entertaining. And Friday, watch the CBSI Hot 10 and roll right back into the show. So, hope you all had a great time. Uh, if you're into wrestling, uh, go harass Pete and Dubs and Dom and Bruce and Sticks. all people that know something Sticks. about wrestling. Uh, I'm sure, I'm Sticks. sure that'll be. Some heated conversations about pre-scripted wrestling matches. Great. See, so if Bruce Will loves us. Twenty men hitting each other. All yeah. of the people. Meat, meat <laughs> hitting each other. That's about it. There, there you go. You always got me on Wait. your mind. Jeez, Dom. Uh, what is your wife going to think? Uh, come on. Don't think oh. anything. As always, thank you very much for hanging around. We appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, join us again next week for whatever the hell we have planned for next week, which I don't know yet, but. I'm sure it'll be a fun time no matter. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.